What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, December 4th, 2017. Delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. There's Go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. So, I Century Fox says, in a stop shooting Bohemian Rhapsody featuring Rami Malik as the iconic lead singer of the rock band queen Freddie Mercury. The studio said in a statement to the Hollywood Reporter Friday, 20th Century Fox Films has temporarily halted production on Bohemian Rhapsody due to the unexpected unavailability of Brian Singer. The entertainment industry trade newspaper says that the U.S. director had been showing up late to the movie's set in England and failed to return to work after the Thanksgiving break. A representative for the filmmaker told the BBC in a statement, Singer's absence is due to a, quote, a personal health matter concerning Brian and his family. The statement says Brian hopes to get back to work on the film soon after the holidays. But Amy Rhapsody is scheduled to open on December 25th, 2018. Tom Hopper, Emily Raver Lapton, David Castaneda, Robert Sheehan, and Aidan Gallagher are to co star with Ellen Page in Netflix's The Umbrella Academy. The 10 episode sci fi drama is to premiere in 2018. Based on the comics and graphic novels of Gerard Way, the live action series follows, quote, the estranged members of a defun- dysfunctional family of superheroes Luther, Diego, Allison, Vanya, Claus and number five, as they work together to solve their father Reginald Hardgraves' mysterious death while coming apart at the seams due to their divergent personalities and abilities, the synopsis says. See Blackman is to serve as executive producer and showrunner. Jeremy Slater penned the pilot script. And a related story, Netflix says it has ordered 20 episodes of a one-hour reboot of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The new show is being developed in the wake of the success of the CW drama Riverdale, which, like as the as-yet-untitled Sabrina property, is inspired by characters from the Archie comics. Netflix News release says Untitled Sabrina series imagines the origin and adventures of Sabrina the Teenage Witch as a dark coming-of-age story that traffics in horror, the occult, and, of course, witchcraft. Totally in the vein of Rosemary's Baby and the Exorcist, this adaptation finds Sabrina wrestling to reconcile her dual nature, half-witch, half-mortal, while standing against the evil forces that threaten her, her family, and the daylight world humans inhabit. Roberto Aguilar Sacasa is the executive producer writer for the reboot. No casting has been announced yet. Melissa Joan Hart played the titular sorceress in the sitcom version of Sabrina Teenage Witch from 1996 to 2003, but has said that she won't be involved in the reboot. Game of Thrones alum Jason Momoa says fans can look forward to an unbelievable final season. The 38-year-old actor who played Khal Drogo on the HBO series said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that season 8 will be great, will be, quote, the greatest thing that's ever aired on TV. Momoa teased, just knowing how amazing the season is going to be, it's going to be the greatest thing that ever aired on TV. It's going to be unbelievable. He also added, it's going to mess up a lot of people, and it was a bummer because I'm a huge fan. I didn't want to know what's going on. I was like, like, damn, I didn't want to know that. Momoa, whose character was killed off in season one, got the lowdown during a recent visit to the show's set in Belfast, Northern Ireland. He says, however, he won't be reprising Drago in the final season. Uh, his star insistent, I just showed up to see producers David Beninoff and D.B. Weiss, and I just happened to see people on set. He explains, I haven't been over there in a long time. You just want to see your friends, and you end up making headlines going Drogo's back, and I'm like, he's dead. He can't come back. It wouldn't work. Momoa had shared photos with Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark in November. He couldn't help but gush about the 31-year-old actress who plays the nearest to Jerrion, the Queen of the Dragons, and Drogo's wither. Widow. The actor wrote, Crazy man insane love for this queen. It's truly like bubbles of giggles are in our bellies when we are together. It's a shame we don't get to see each other as much as we would like to, but when we do, I feel like a call. Game of Thrones co-stars Kit Harington, Lena Headley, Sophie Turner, and Macy Williams. The show has yet to set a premiere date for its eighth and final season. 
Lost and Taken actress Maggie Grace has joined season four of the zombie apocalypse saga Fear the Walking Dead. The 34-year-old wrote on Facebook this week, much thanks to the wonderful cast and crew for the gracious welcome. What an impressive team. We really hit the ground running. She also posted a screenshot of a Deadline.com article reporting Grace would be a series regular, but offering no other details about her character or storyline. The show is to begin airing fresh episodes in mid-2018. Returning are Kim Dickens, Frankie Delane, Alicia Demon and Carrie, Coleman Domingo, and Danae Garcia. Series newbies, along with Grace, will be Garrett Dillon Hunt, Jenna Elfman, and Lenny James, who is currently playing Morgan on Fear the Walking Dead's sister series, The Walking Dead. Showtime says it is renewed Smith, Smith, uh, as comic created by and starring Frankie Shaw for a second season. Also featuring Rosie O'Donnell, Miguel Gomez, Samara Weaving, and Alexandra and Anna Reimer. The series is slated to go back into production next year. Season 1 is to wrap up on the cable network December 31st. The show is about a 20-something single mom raising her son in Boston. Gary Levine, the president of programming for Showtime Network, said in a statement from its first episode, the refreshingly honest point of view of Smilf broke through with audiences, the press, and on social media. Frankie Shaw is a creative force to be reckoned with, and we love having her on Showtime. Her show is funny and forthright, pointed and poignant, irreverent and reverent, all at once. We can't wait to see where Frankie takes Smilf next season. Lifetime says its eight-episode competition series, Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid, is to debut January 11th. The show, quote, follows six young aspiring models and their mothers as they travel to New York City, shacked up on their one roof, and pursue their dreams of becoming supermodels. Each week, Yolanda puts the girls and their moms through a series of lessons and assignments designed to not only test their modeling agility, but also the strength of their mother-daughter relationship, a press release says. The women are competing for a management contract with Hadid's company and the opportunity to be represented by IMG Models in New York. Expected to appear throughout the series are Hadid's celebrity daughters Gigi and Bella, supermodel Devin Windsor and Alec Wick, and fashion designers Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, Yolanda Hadid is a model and television personality best known for her work in the reality show Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. ABC News suspended Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross for four weeks without pay due to a, quote, serious error in his report about Michael Flynn. Ross cited on Air Friday a Flynn confidant the saying Flynn was prepared to testify Donald Trump instructed him to contact Russian officials during his presidential campaign. However, ABC News said the source later clarified Trump assigned Flynn and a few other senior advisors after the election to find ways to improve relations with Russia, specifically regarding working together against the Islamic State. ABC News corrected the story hours after the original report aired. ABC News said in a statement Saturday, We deeply regret and apologize for the serious error we made yesterday. The reporting conveyed by Brian Ross during the special report has not been fully vetted through our editorial standard process. As a result of our continuing reporting over the next several hours, ultimately we determined the information was wrong and we corrected the mistake on air and online. It is vital we get the story right and retain the trust we have built with our audience. These are our core principles. We fell far short of that yesterday. Ross retweeted the uh, statement and posted his own uh, messages, which read, My job is to hold people accountable, and that's why I agree with being held accountable myself. Flynn pleaded guilty Friday to one count of making a false statement to the FBI about his interactions with former Russian Ambassador Sergei Kissyak. Uh, Flynn, a retired general and former head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, served as a national security advisor under Trump for less than a month before he was fired for misleading Vice President Mike Pence about his Russian contacts. Flynn is also under investigation for, by congressional committees probing against Russian interference in the 2016 presidential campaign. New York's Metropolitan Opera says it is investigating allegations its famed conductor James Levine sexually abused an aspiring conductor for years, starting when he was 15, three decades ago. The New York Times said Met officials acknowledged they had been aware of the alleged victim's police report since it was last filed last year in Illinois, but they also said Levine denied any wrongdoing at the time and authorities did not contact them further. The New York Post was the first media outlet to publish a story about these allegations Saturday. 
The company tweeted Saturday, We are deeply disturbed by the news articles that are being published online today about James Levine. We are working on an investigation with our outside resources to determine whether charges of sexual misconduct in the 1980s are true so that we can take appropriate actions. Levine, who is 74, was the Mets music director from 1976 until April 2016. He now serves as the Mets musical director, Emirates. Um... Levine has not publicly commented this weekend on the media reports or the Mets investigation into his alleged misconduct. The Australian Academy of Cinema Television Arts confirmed actor Jeffrey Rush has stepped down as president amid allegations of inappropriate behavior. Rush has been in the position since 2011. The group said in a statement Saturday, AACTA acknowledged the decision today of Jeffrey Rush to voluntarily step aside as president of AACTA and accepts and respects his decision to do so. We have been deeply concerned about the situation and support a course of action that both respects Jeffrey's right to the presumption of innocence and due process, but also acknowledges good corporate governance in these circumstances. We will not be making any further comment at this time. Best known for his work in The King's Speech, Pirates of the Caribbean, Shakespeare in Love and Shine, Rush has denied any wrongdoing after a report was published Wednesday saying the Sydney Theatre Company received a complaint after Rush after he appeared in it in its production of King Lear two years ago, Variety reported. No details regarding that alleged misconduct has been reported. Rush said through his lawyer in a statement to Deadline.com, certain recent media reports have made untenable allegations concerning my standing in the entertainment community. It is unreasonable that my profession colleagues should be somehow associated with such allegations. In the circumstances, I've decided to step aside in my ambassador role as president of AACTA, effective immediately until these issues have been resolved. This decision has not been made lightly. However, in the current climate of innuendo and unjustifiable reporting, I believe the decision to make a clean break to clear the air is the best for all concerned. Lady Bird actress and guest host Sasha Ronan sang a song about sexual harassment with the female stars of Saturday Night Live this weekend. Ronan, Cicely Strong, Kate McKinnon, and A.D. Bryan appeared to, uh, in the pre-recorded segment and called out actors, filmmakers, media stars, and politicians who have been publicly accused in recent months of acting inappropriately towards women. Bryan said in an introduction to the song Welcome to Hell, all these big, cool, powerful guys are turning out to be, what's the word, habitual predators. McKinnon added, cats out in the bag, women get harassed all the time. Brian wondered, and it's like, dang, is this the world now? Ryan chimed in, but here's a little secret that every girl knows. Uh, Strong says, oh, this has been the damn world. The song then kicks in with, it's freaking and nasty, it's buttoned under the desk bad, but this is our hometown, we'll show you around, welcome to hell, now we're all in here. Julia Stiles is giving fans a first glimpse of her newborn son. The 36-year-old posted a picture Tuesday with drummer Newcomb, her first child with husband Preston J. Cook, after welcoming the infant in October. The snapshot shows Stiles striking a pose as she heads out with Strummer in tow. The star wears a herringbone backpack and a baby carrier that cradles her son to her chest. She captioned a photo, I haven't worked a backpack since middle school, now I have a front pack. Hashtag Juby, uh, hashtag Tula Baby Carriers. Uh, Styles announced in a post last week that she and Cook welcomed Strummer on October 20th. The actress gave birth at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. She wrote, Strummer Newcomb Cook, born October 20th, 2017. Thanks and ever thanks to the extraordinary doctors, nurses, and staff at Mount Sinai for helping bring this utter joy into our lives. Styles confirmed in June that she was expecting with Cook an actor and camera assistant. She and Cook tied the knot over Labor Day weekend in September at a beach wedding in Seattle, Washington. Guardians of the Galaxy star Chris Pratt has filed for divorce from mom actress Anna Faris, his wife of eight years. People magazine said Pratt filed legal documents for Einstein irreconcilable differences as the reason for the split he and his spouse announced during this summer. TMZ reported Faris filed her response for, to petition at the same time with similar information. Celebrity News website cited an unnamed source as saying the breakup is totally amicable and the former couple who have a prenuptial agreement are close to reaching a property settlement. 
Rosario Dawson and Eric Andre are calling it quits after more than a year of dating. A source confirmed the breakup to Us Weekly. The source says it just ran its course. He was never something serious. A source also confirmed the split to People Magazine. A rep for Dawson did not respond to the publication's request for a comment. Dawson and Andre first made their relationship public on Valentine's Day 2016 with the comedian sharing a now-deleted tweeter, uh, tweet in honor of Dawson. Andre said at the time, the undisputed most gorgeous being on the planet. I love you, BB. Hashtag Happy Valentine's Day. Dawson in September shared a series of throwback photos featuring herself and Andre in the hospital together on Instagram after she recovered from an emergency surgery from a ruptured cyst in her ovaries. Um, she said, What a difference a year makes. This weekend marks a year that I had to get emergency surgery to stop internal bleeding from a ruptured cyst on my ovaries. It was the first time I told Eric that I loved him and very much not the last. Thankful for his care and all the doctors and nurses and staff at the Desert Regional Medical Center. Andre is best known as the host of Adult Swim's The Eric Andre Show, which also stars Hannibal Burris. Dawson has been previously linked to DJ Matthew Schreyer before they split in 2011 and filmmaker Danny Boyle with their relationship ending in March 2013. Carlton Gebbia and her husband David Gebbia are headed for divorce. David filed Tuesday in Los Angeles to end his 20-year marriage to the 44-year-old former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star, according to The Blast. U.S. Weekly report David cited irreconcilable differences for the split. He is requesting joint custody and legal custody of his three children with Gebbia, 15-year-old daughter Destiny, 14-year-old daughter Mysteria, and 6-year-old son Cross. David listed September 16 as the date of separation, although Gebbia has confirmed the split in August 2016. She said in an interview with People the next month that she and David were finally on the same page about their future. The star explained it was never a verbal decision between him and I. It just sort of happened naturally. It was a gradual breakup of our relationship over a period of time. She confessed this man was my soulmate for 20 years and never would I have imagined this. He was my everything, but we've been together a long time. It is wonderful now to know that we can still continue to be partners. Gabby is known for starring on season 4 of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She shared a photo on Twitter with her three children Wednesday, the day after David filed for divorce. The star captioned the picture, so very blessed with these amazing babies. Hashtag Thanksgiving 2017. Hashtag my everything. Spencer Grammer and her husband are headed for divorce. The 34-year-old actress espoused James Heffiff filed Wednesday in Los Angeles to end his six-year marriage to Grammer, according to TMZ. Us Weekly reported that Hesh Heff uh, cited irreconcilable differences for the split. He and Grammer, who married in February 2011, shared six-year-old son Emmett Emanuel. Hesh Heff is seen joint physical and legal custody of Emmett. He and Grammer are in meditation and hope to resolve all custody and property issues outside of court. Grammer, the eldest child, child of actor Kelsey Grammer was feeling thankful for Emmett in a post last week. She shared a photo on Instagram of her son taking a train in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. The star captioned the picture, thankful for this guy, the light in my life, enjoyed the ride. Grammer is known for playing Casey Carwright on Greek and has also starred on Ironside and Mr. Robinson. She voices Summer on the Adult Swim series Rick and Morty, which completed a third season in October. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart reunite Thursday as they sat down to enjoy a meal together months after starring in their final X-Men project, Logan. Jackson, uh, Jackman excuse me, said on Twitter alongside a photo of the pair enjoying a conversation at a dinner table. Father and son reunion, hashtag Logan, hashtag Charles, hashtag Wolverine. Jackman's use of the phrase reflects their character's relationship in the X-Men series as Professor X, played by Stewart, mentored and cared for Wolverine, played by Jackman. A scene from Logan, which was released in March, featured Jackman referring to Stewart as his father as a, well to, as a way to conceal their identities. Logan was tutored as as Jackman's final role as Wolverine after playing the character for 17 years, seven movies, including one cameo role. He said in October 2015, this will be my last one. It is my last one. I felt like it was the right time to do it. And let's be honest, 17 years? I never thought in a million years it would last, so I'm grateful to the fans for the opportunity of playing them. Stewart similarly said Logan would be his last film as Professor X, also known as Charles Xavier, saying that he came to the decision after viewing the film alongside Jackman. Stewart said, As I sat there, I realized there will never be a better, a more perfect, more sensitive, emotional, and beautiful way to say a Rivarachi to Charles Xavier than this movie. So I told Hugh that same evening, I'm done too. It's all over. Jackman has expressed interest, however, remaining as the iconic mutant if it meant that Wolverine could appear in Avengers movie. 
he says. I always love the idea of him within that dynamic with the Hulk, obviously, with Iron Man, but there was a lot of smarter people with MBAs who can't figure that out, that laughter. You never know. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stepped out Friday for their first joint royal visit. The 33-year-old British royal and 36-year-old American actress were all smiles in Nottingham, England, following news of their engagement. Prince Harry and Markle greeted crowds ahead of a visit to the National Justice Museum and the Nottingham Contemporary, where the Terrace Higgins Trust hosted an event to mark World AIDS Day. Kensington Palace tweeted, Prince Harry and Ms. Meghan Markle arrived at Nottingham for their first official visit together since announcing their engagement. Prince Harry has been to Nottingham many times before and is delighted to be introduced to the city to Miss Markle. Prince Harry and Markle wore coordinating outfits with both the prince and the actress in long navy coats and oatmeal colored scarves. One well, uh, well wisher jokingly asked Prince Harry what it's like to be with Markle as a ginger with red hair. Uh, the prince responded, according to the BBC, it's great, isn't it? Prince Harry and Markle announced their engagement last Monday following a romantic proposal at home this month. Kensington Palace said last Tuesday that the couple will marry at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle in May. Lady Gaga wore a conspicuous diamond ring Wednesday amid rumors of her engagement. The 31-year-old singer sported a massive sparkler on her left hand in a new uh, photo. On Instagram, following reports she will marry boyfriend Christian Carino. Lady Gaga posted a series of pictures of herself posing in a bikini and captain on the beaches around Miami, Florida. The star performed in the city Thursday and, will, and took the stage Friday in Tampa. She captioned one snapshot from the woods for Thanksgiving to the beaches for tour in Miami. Hashtag be yourself. Hashtag Lady Gaga. Hashtag beachwear. Hashtag Joanne World Tour Miami. Bienvenidos a Miami. Us Weekly reported November 1st that Lady Gaga and Carino secretly got engaged over the summer. Sources said that the couple are focused on treating Lady Gaga's fibromyalgia and have yet to make wedding plans. And Insider previously told the magazine they are actually pretty serious. They are both really happy it works. Lady Gaga was first linked to Carino in February following her split from fiancé Taylor Kinney in July 2016. She shared a photo with Carino in October after spending a sweet moment with the talented agent at sunset. Kesha penned an article for Time Thursday about the best way to enjoy the holidays while dealing with depression. The piece was written as part of Time's partnership with OptionB.org, the nonprofit initiative from Sheryl Sandberg's that commissions essays from influential people about dealing with the difficult holiday season. Kesha writes in the article about her own holiday experiences along with advice on how to get through the month of December. The pop star says the holiday season is supposed to be the most festive and fun time of the year, but sometimes it can quickly become a stressful and emotional time. All those plans and expectations of joy can turn tougher than they sound. This is especially true for those who struggle with mental illness, be it depression, anxiety, addiction, or any other challenges. She continued by saying, the holidays break your routine. Sometimes you're forced, just, uh, forced to spend time with family you rarely see and don't always get along with. Or maybe you're alone when everyone else is with family. Or you're off from work and with more time to think troubling thoughts. Or you are at work and can't be with those you love. Or you are thrust into party situations that tempt your demons. Or you aren't invited to those tempting parties. Uh, Kesha wrote about taking a step back during the busy season around the holidays. I often feel like I'm supposed to be everywhere with everyone, all with that the added guilt that it's the season of giving. To fight this, I develop a mantra. It's not selfish to take time for yourself. She also said, just do whatever helps you calm down and give yourself a break from the stress. It's not your responsibility to try to make the whole world happy. If you take a little time for yourself, you will actually be much better company for those around you. Kesha in August pr uh, presented a letter she wrote to her 18 year old self on CBS This Morning that gave her pre uh, previous self advice on how to navigate the music industry at a young age and stay hopeful no matter how things get hard. The singer recently received her first Grammy nominations, including Best Pop Solo Performance for her album Praying and Best Pop Vocal Album for Rainbow. Ed Sheeran released his remix to a single Perfect featuring Beyonce. The track, which was posted on Sheeran's YouTube page, features Beyonce entering during the second verse. Beyonce sings, While well, I found a man stronger than anyone I know, he shares my dream. I hope that someday we share our home. I found a love to carry more than just my secrets, to carry love, to carry children of my own. Beyonce and Sheeran can then be heard alternating lyrics and harmonizing together. Perfect was first released on Sheeran's third studio album titled Divide. The pop star teased a remix with 
Beyonce as being a big deal. The track represents the third collaboration Beyonce has taken part in recently, following her appearance on the remix of J Balvin and Willie Williams' hit Mi Gente, which helped benefit hurricane relief efforts and a role in Eminem's new single Walk on Water. Country music stars Kelsey Ballerini and Morgan Evans exchanged wedding vows on a beach at the Esperanza Resort in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. The ceremony took place Saturday. Us Weekly reported the couple got engaged on Christmas Day 2016. Ballerini told People Magazine in an interview before the wedding, With our careers, we get to do what we love, then we get to find time to be who we love. I think that makes for a real full life, when you can do everything that you want and then share it with someone. Um... Evans added, in the lead up to a wedding, you ask a lot of your married friends, especially people that are in similar situations or similar age, does anything change or is it just the same but a little more awesome? Everyone keeps telling us, oh, it gets better. And so, whatever that means, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Taylor Swift's album Reputation is now available on Spotify and Apple Music. The record debuted on streaming services Thursday following its release in November. Swift announced the news in an Instagram post reading Reputation available tonight on all streaming services. Reputation debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 albums charts following its November 10th release and has remained in the top spot since. The album has sold over 1.2 million units in its first seven days according to Billboard. Swift shared a video in November of herself recording her new song Delta delicate reputation includes 14 other tracks including the hits look what you made me do ready for it and gorgeous she captioned the clip the making of hashtag delicate hashtag reputation hashtag taylor swift now swift will promote reputation with the new north american stadium tour beginning in 2018 she will kick off the venture may 8th in glendale arizona and bring the tour to a close october 6th in arlington texas the anime family adventure Coco is the number one movie in North America for a second consecutive weekend, earning an additional $26.1 million in receipts. Box Office Mojo.com announced Sunday. Coming in at number two is Justice League with $16.6 million, followed by Wonder at number three with $12.5 million, Thor Ragnarok at number four with $9.7 million, and Daddy's Home 2 at number five with $7.5 million. Rounding up the top tier are Murder on the Orient Express at number six with $6.7 million, Lady Bird at number seven with $4.54 million. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, number eight with $4.53 million. The Star, number nine with $4 million. And A Bad Mom's Christmas at number 10 with $3.5 million. And as your entertainment report for Monday, December 4th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on all social media platforms, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the answer report, or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio. Dot com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.